Good morning, Awana kids. Miss Carol here. We're going to learn about Elijah this week. And Elijah, there's uh, God told, tells us about him in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in 1 Kings. And the lesson we have today is specific to chapter 19. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings. So you can go to your Bible and you can learn about Elijah in 1st Kings chapter 19. He was a prophet. Elijah was a prophet of God. Let's review what a prophet is. A prophet was a man, or a woman, but usually a man, who, who told people God's messages. Sometimes it was good news, sometimes it was sad news, sometimes it was bad news. So Elijah was a prophet. He's also called the running prophet, and we'll learn why he's called that this morning. He heard a message from the wicked, evil queen Jezebel. Oh no, it was a horrible message. She loved the fake god Baal, and she encouraged and commanded the people to worship Baal. She wanted to harm Elijah because he was the prophet of the one true God, and she did not like Elijah at all. Elijah became afraid of her. Have you ever been afraid of something or someone? He turned around, and the Bible tells us that he started to run fast, as far away from her as he could get. He ran, and he ran, and he ran. He and his servant kept on running, the Bible tells us, until they reached Beersheba, which was a city way down south in the land of Judah. He was really having a bad day, wasn't he? He's very, very afraid, and he's running. He continued out alone, the Bible tells us, into the desert and ran and ran. He plopped down under a shady tree and he prayed, Oh Lord, I give up. Please just take my life. I'm a good-for-nothing prophet. <sighs> then he laid down on the ground, and the Bible tells us that he fell asleep. He was exhausted because he had been running for so long. He slept and he slept. We don't know how long, but he slept a long time, and then he felt someone touching him. Have you ever been asleep and felt somebody touch you to wake you up? The Bible tells us that it was an angel who appeared to him and told him to get up and to eat and drink. Now, where do you think that food and water came from? You're right. God provided it for him. Then the Bible tells us that after he ate and drank, he went to sleep again. And then the Bible says the angel woke him up again, and he ate and drank again. And then he was replenished with his energy. What does that mean? He had strength. He felt like he could go on because he had slept and he had eaten food and he had drank water. The Bible then tells us that he walked 40 more days to the Mount of Horeb, and there he lived in a cave. The Lord spoke to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Why are you here? And Elijah gave him, Well, they don't like me, and they were going to harm me, and I ran away, and, and nobody worships God anymore. God said, really? Why are you here? Why are you here? And he told God the story again. Nobody likes me. They're going to harm me. Nobody worships God. God said to him, I want you to watch, and I want you to listen. God sent a strong, strong wind. Strong wind. It was so strong, it broke the rocks in the mountain apart. But God wasn't in the wind. Then he sent an earthquake. God wasn't in the earthquake. Then he sent a fire, but God wasn't in the fire. After that, God said to him, I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I want you to go back home. I want you to go back home. I still have work for you to do. And I'm going to give you a partner to help you. His name is Elisha. This is Elijah. But Elisha will be your partner. And he will help you. I will give you strength. And oh, by the way, there are 7,000 people back home that have not worshipped Baal. Elijah didn't think there was anybody left that worshipped God. 
But God said, that's not true. There's 7,000 people that have not worshipped Baal. And remember that Baal was an idol, a fake God. We worship the one true God. So God said, why are you here? I want you to go back home, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to be a helper, and I'm going to give you the strength to do this. And there's 7,000 people that have worshipped Baal. So he sent him back home, gave him the tools, gave him the strength to do what he needed to do. The Bible then tells us that Elijah ran back to serve God willingly. You know, God promises that he will never leave us or forsake us. He promises that he never changes. God promises that he's the same today as he was yesterday, as he will be tomorrow. He never changes. God will always, always be with us, and we can take that and hang on to it as truth. So what we can learn from Elijah is God cared for Elijah when he felt scared and ready to give up. God will take care of you if you're scared and feel like you're ready to give up. And when things look bad, God was still at work. And we have to remember that in our lives. Even when things look bad, God is still on the throne in heaven. He's still in control and he's still working and we can count on that. We should never give up. We should keep on serving the Lord. So in your life, if there are things that you know are the right thing to do, you do the right thing. Always do the right thing. Do those things that God has called us to do. Always, always, always. It may just be having a right attitude. It may be being kind to someone who's not kind to you. Maybe all sorts of things, but I want you to think about that. God never leaves us. He gives us work to do every day. There's always somebody that we can touch and have an influence on for Jesus. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for the lesson of Elijah. God, you didn't leave him. You didn't forsake him. You encouraged him to not give up. And when he was so discouraged, you allowed him to sleep. You gave him food. You gave him water. And Father, those things help us to keep on being strong. So help us to take good care of ourselves, but to always make good choices and good decisions. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have a great week. I love you. I miss all of you, and I hope to see you in the fall. Bye-bye.